Morgan standing back at the five, and we are set to get underway. The winner, the state semifinals next week. Here's the kick. And it will come down short. Bounce in front of Campamore. He'll pick it up at the 15. He's to the 20. Cuts it right up the middle to the 25-yard line. It is one down right there. And the Green Devils will have it first and 10 at the 25. In there on the tackle was Noah Schachter. And let's take a look at the Dayton Green Devil offensive set. 25-yard line. Beachwood comes out in their passes in 5-3 defense. And two backs, actually three backs in the backfield this time for Dayton. In the power eye formation. And here's the handle. No. Klein pitches outside to Skirvin around the right side. He's got some running him to the 30-yard line. It slips out of bounds. At around the 31, as Skirvin got around the corner, Joey lifts the linebacker in there to shove what can happen. Skirvin once again at the tailback position. And once again at a power eye, Klein underneath on the second down and four. Here's the handoff to the fullback straight up the middle. I believe that is Perry, and he is near first down yardage, maybe a yard shy at around the... 34-yard line, and Perry up off the bottom of the 34-yard line. Third down to the long one. Now backs are split in the backfield. Cross him into one side. Skirby to the other. Handoff. Skirby's right up the middle. Got first down yard. He's to the 40. He's, He's on. The He's to the 40-yard line. To the 30. Trying to chase him down, and they will not do it. And Jason Skirvin has scored a touchdown. 66-yard touchdown, Rob, for Jason Skirvin. Well, Dayton has already done something tonight they did not do in the first encounter against the Tigers, and that is score some points. Jason Skirvin with six on the Perry, and then somebody with Skirvin's talent up the middle to the right side, and nobody was going to run him down. Important extra point forthcoming now for the Green Devils. Trey Scott in to attempt it. Ball on the tee. Kick is up, and it is blocked. The Beachwood Tigers have blocked it. Dayton leads six to nothing. 10:35 left to go in the first quarter, and we'll be back on the Star Sports Radio Network. <laughs> come out full out backfield for the Tigers on this first down play here's the handoff left side Pick Bishop up. with it to the 35 yard line still on his feet and finally down at the 40 Josh Bishop with the football and Charlie Young in to make the in 10 15 left to go in the first quarter Beachwood with the football for the first time it's eight and six Beachwood nothing and in motion is Brian Bishop, handoff, Wolfeck. Wolfeck looking for some running room, kicks it to the outside, bounces off a couple of defenders, and gets to about the 45-46 yard line. Good run by Wolfeck. And on the stop is Flanker position. And right now the Beachwood offensive line doing a very, very nice job, especially on the left side. They're blowing out some nice holes for Bishop and Wolfeck to run through, but right now John Witcher sees something he doesn't like. Second down and five for the Beachwood Tigers with the ball at the 46 yard line, I formation. And here's the handoff on the end of round. Brian Bishop looking for some running room to the 45, cuts it inside and brought down. Nice tackle from behind at the 48-yard line by Keith Young, the defensive end, as he came on the backs. Roberts, Ackerson, Honaker, and Young. Third down now and two for Beachwood. Full house backfield handoff. Brian Bishop left side to the 50-yard line and brought down. That was going to be enough for the first down. Had to get just across the 50, and that's all he got. Jason Skirvin in on the stop. Let's go back to Sports Central for a scoring update. And they scored on the first play from scrimmage. Right. Justin Frisk with that long run. You're right. Wide out to the far side. I formation ball at the 49-yard line. Hand off to Wolfex. Straight up the gut to about the 48. Gain of three. And in on the stop, Tim Simmons. The Kentucky is, have a good balance attack, but right now they're trying to establish the running game here in the first quarter. A first quarter that has Dayton on top, six to nothing. Second and eight, double slots. And here's the handoff. Double and reverse. reverse. With the ball is caught to the 45 and twists and turns around the 44 yard line. So not a lot on that as they went with the double reverse. The Wayne Scott are to coil on. He's taking yep. over the helmet, Beachwood from Bernie Berry, now the head coach of the. Wyoming Club in Ohio, four state championships to his credit, and in the state finals, five straight years. Kaiser to the far side, Ratliff to the near, Bishop in motion, back to throw, will go with the look, screen pass to the outside, Bishop's got it, he will not get the first down as he is stuck at around the 47-yard line, and they showed that, early. and now Wolfpack, who's one of the best punters in northern Kentucky, has to go back in punt formation for his Beachwood Tigers. And Honaker and Young are standing back at around the 10-yard line. Here's the snap and the kick, and it's a low-line drive, and that's not at all Wolfeck-like, and that will ball will bounce at the 35 and take 
uh, Beachwood roll till around the 20 yard line. A punt of just 25. Eastern Skirvin so far. Two carries, 73 yards, and a touchdown. Bosterman and Skirvin in the backfield as the back for Skirvin is first down from the 20. Here's the pitch to Klosterman around the right side. There's nowhere for him to go. Back at around the 19 yard line. In fact, for the Beachwood Tigers getting in there in a big hurry with Dan Woolley. He almost got the pitch. We'll be pleased with the play out of the 6 5 senior for Dayton. Second down, now they're in the eye. And the tailback is Klosterman. Here's the pitch again to Klosterman around the right side. He's to the 20-yard line and brought down at around the 21. And they're going to say fumble. He think he fumbled the football. But I believe they got it. But he'll be back there reading and be looking for interception all the way on the third and long play for the Green Devils. Third down and nine. Klein with a pitch to the outside. And Skirvin with the football. Cuts it up to the 25. He's to the 30. 35-yard line to the 40 and brought down at the 41. And a yard line the penalty marker is down back at the 25. And this is coming back, Randy. And this is going to be on Tim Simmons. You can tell because he's getting an ejection here from the game. Actually, we had some uh, some words go on. The, uh, it was a holding call. It was on uh, Simmons. Right. And, and as soon as he <laughs> the ref pointed to him and called it. He got right that ref's face, and I would not be a bit surprised if he's gone after these two flags. Are, I, I don't wow. think they'll kick him out of the game, but it certainly is going to be a costly penalty because it nullifies the first down yardage that Skirvin picked up, yeah. and in addition to that, it's going to cost on a personal foul penalty another 15 yards against the Green Devils, so that indeed could be a yeah, costly, be, costly error. Well, it won't be a full 15. It could be half a distance. Yeah. Well, Skirvin did pick up enough yardage down here. Beachwood's going to get great field position. But again, perhaps Skirvin picked up the first down yards because of the penalty. Right. Skirvin in the backfield, and back to throw will go Klein. Looks, looks, looks. Now pump fake. Now pull it down and run with the football, and he's dropped it around the nine-yard line. Nice tackle in there defensively by the Beachwood White Tigers. Horses. White Horse has got in there and tripped Klein up. And Skirvin will set up to punt it away from his own end zone. He's also a good punter. Here's the snap, and here's the kick. They'll angle it away from Bishop. It will bounce and take a big Dayton roll as it bounces the 35 and rolls all the way to the 46-yard line where Dayton will down it at the 46. For touchdown right now, Beachwood down 6-0. Eye formation in the backfield for the Tigers. Beachwood going left to right on your radio dial. First down from the 46. Bishop will go in motion and back to throw. Will go Wisher. Steps up in the pocket. Throws long. Down right field. Left. And it's going to be incomplete. And we got a flag at the 15-yard line. As Ratliff was running a post, Snyder was with him. But, with, but it was Ratliff that had a little bit of a distance on him. And then Ratliff turned around to get the football. And he ran right over hmm. top of him. And that's the flag. I don't know, I don't know about that call. I, I, really, I, don't I, don't, that I, I think that was an uncatchable pass, quite frankly. And Mike Woods, you're down on the football field. You hit a different perspective on it. What does the penalty flag break right on that play from our vantage point? But nevertheless, Beachwood in their red jerseys with the white numerals has it first and 10 out of the Dayton 30. At the 30, here's the pitch outside Wolfpack. He's to the 29 to the 25, inside the 25 to the 20, and down to the 19 yard line. In there on the tackle was Delbert Honecker. Quarter number one, it's Dayton on top of Beachwood, six to nothing, but Wolfpack can score at any time from anywhere. First down for the 19, pitch to Wolfpack around the left side, looking for some running room. He won't get any. He is stuck back at the 22-yard line. Good defensive play by Trey Scott. The line with ammo has had a banner year. Well, I think this is the best football team maybe we've ever seen in Northern Kentucky, the Highlands Bluebirds this year. Back to throw will go Wisher. Looking for and he will roll to the left side. He's at the 20-yard line and brought down on a big hit at around the 19. Tim Simmons in on the tackle for the Dayton Green Devils. Three minutes and 25. Newport, and they have it all. Even ammo. Stop in today for all your carry-out needs. Well, <laughs> I don't need any ammo, but right now, Beachwood needs 10 yards for a first down. Third and 10. Here's the pitch to the outside. Coyle trying to cut the corner. He's to the 15. Still on his feet to the 10. Inside the 5. Touchdown! Beautiful run that time by Scott. A 20-yard touchdown scamper off the right side, and that was a great individual effort by Scott Coyle. As Coyle, when he got to the outside, he hit the corner that saw the safeties coming up, taking the outside. Kevin, in fact, I thought he was going to be stopped at around the 22-yard line. Excellent job. Now will special teams provide Beachwood with a one-point advantage in this contest. Wolfpack is an excellent kicker. He's a left-footed kicker. Lines are down on the tee. Kick is up, and it is so good. good. And we are tied at six as he missed it to the left. 2.49 to play in the first quarter. We're tied. They 
like that. Yep. Third and nine, they're in trouble. Deep trouble. First down from the 20 yard line. Power eye formation. And Klein will go back to throw the football. Looks downfield, throws the fly pattern up for grabs, and it's going to be caught at the 40 yard line. And at the 30 yard line, that's Neil Richardson. Neil Richardson, and he will go for a touchdown as he goes up top and catches it between two Beachwood defenders, turns around, and streaks 50 yards into the end zone. Randy Richardson is a 6'2 senior, and he robs Scott Coyle with an interception. Going in the playoffs, and now Dayton's going to go for the two point conversion. Backs are split in the backfield as they go for the two-point conversion. And here's the handoff to Skirvin. He's got some running room. And it is stopped in a major hurry. And Dillon. in there on the stop was Jeff Dillon. It was wide open for a minute as Dillon comes up to make the stop. Two-point conversion, no good. 12-6, Dayton on top. <laughs> Left to right on your radio dial. And we got a flag. Hand off the Wolfpack. He's to the 40-yard line. into the 44. Gain of about nine. Yep, this, this is, is going to come back. Yep. This is going to come back. I thought it was either going to be procedure or motion against BB set for, for a second. Everybody, before you can snap the ball. And at that time, it was almost a Canadian type. Everybody was on the move when that ball was snapped. Hey, Mike, you saw that play. Richardson from, from eye level down there on the field. He went up very high. And just here was all uh, just pure uh, talent because he jumped up, picked it off, and managed to keep his feet, which was a surprising thing. Double slot, Ratliff wide out to the far side. Wolfex, the lone man in the backfield. On this first down, Wisher will go back to throw the football. He's flushed out of the pocket, and he's dropped back in the 25-yard line. And the Green Devils have come to play this evening. Jeremiah Brill in on the stop as Wisher had very little time to throw the football. And that's a long juncture, but I am surprised they've already scored twice against the Beachwood Tigers. Second down, wide out to both sides. Bishop to the near, and I believe Ratliff over to the far side on the I formation now. Josh, Josh Bishop, Bishop will go in motion. Here's the handoff to Ratliff straight, or handoff, excuse me, to Wolfex straight up the gut to about the 29-yard line. A gain of four. That'll bring up a second down and 11. And right now, they have a balanced attack, but I think Wisher is usually the quarterback for Beachwood yeah. that's playing from ahead as opposed to behind, and that makes a difference when you're the quarterback. Coil in motion. Bishop in the slot. Ratliff the wide out. Back to throw. Right. Looks downfield. Wisher throws down the middle. It's going to be incomplete at the 40-yard line, and Wisher was... Hit and hit hard. Play for the second time in this game. Back is Honaker. And also, is that Skirvin back there as well? Here's the kick. It will come down and bounce in front of Honaker, who will field at the 31. Cuts it to the left side, looking for some running room. Got Not a whole lot there. Now he does. Now he's he gets 35. It. He's to the 40-yard line. He's to the 50-yard line. Still on his feet. Across midfield of the 40 and brought down at the 38. Randy, that was an excellent punt return that time because the punt traveled some 39 yards, but it was rookie. The winner of that one will play Highlands or Connor next week. That'll Down be there. Highlands. In the mouth. 24 seconds left in the first quarter. A surprising first quarter here that has Dayton on top, 12 to 6. And off Skirvin up the gut to the 35-yard line. It falls forward to about the 31. And then on the stop was Dan Woolley. And Dan, the Green Devils wanted final game. That year? When I was five years old. Jesus, well, you just dated yourself. <laughs> Second down and four now for the Dayton Green Devils. Ball at the beach with 31-yard line. And here's the handoff to Skirvin. Skirvin rumbles to the 25 and inside the 25 and to the 22-yard line. Brian Bishop in on the tackle. I'm going to tell you something, Randy. The Dayton Green Devils have you answer a team scoring a touchdown. That shows you've got confidence in yourself, and that was a big play in this one, and Dayton is looking for more. Wide out to both sides. Back split in the backfield. With the football is Klein. Good Klein decision. with the keeper, and dropped at the 20-yard line. That's still the right decision, Randy, even though he just got back to the line of scrimmage that time, like they are here in Fort Mitchell for the Beachwood Tigers. Second down and eight. Klein underneath, back split in the backfield, back to throw, will go Klein, he'll throw it to the outside, it's going to be picked off! That's Josh Bishop at the 24-yard line, he just going quickly to the outside, an outside route, and Bishop read it perfectly, now they're going to say, are they going to say incomplete? I think they're going to talk it over, but I think Bishop intercepted yeah, I the think ball. he did too. And that is, again, what Dayton could ill afford to do is turn the football over. That's the first of the night. But Josh Bishop with a great read on the screen. And that oh, time the wide minute. receiver tried to set it back. Incomplete, Kevin. That's difficult to see on the far side of the field, but I thought he picked it. I did, too. Man in motion. 
Barton here on this third down. Here's the pitch to Skirvin. Skirvin looking for some running room. Not much there. A couple to the 18-yard line. And it'll bring up a third down. And Jeff Zellin in on the stop. So, or it'll be a, bring up a fourth down, I should say. And once again, not where... Still goal trying. I just don't think Dayton's got yep. the ability to knock that well, I think through the upright. Watch right. Richardson. He's in the slot. You got to watch Richardson. Also, I think Skirvin out of the backfield. Man will go in motion. And back to throw will go climb. Got look, a wide look, open man. Look. He will throw into the end zone right side. And it's going to be incomplete. Trey Scott was the intended receiver that time and coil back there defensively on the foes and this club is back in business and off Wolfpack left side with some running room he's to the 30 he's to the 40 yard line now it's going to be a foot race down the sideline one man has a chance he won't catch him Wolfpack will score and we are tied at 12 that's an 82 yard touchdown run and Wolfpack pretty much did it all his own and the one thing I thought might have been called that time Randy was again a quick snap from the Beachwood Tigers it wasn't called and boy Wolfbeck put it to the Green Devils right there 82 yards and Wolfbeck now over the century mark in terms of rushing yardage side as well well it's been a game of big plays we are tied at 12 and Wolfbeck now will have to catch lines are down Here's a snap on the tee, kick is up, and it is good. And the Tigers lead for the first time, 13 to 12 with 9.57 left. And in a game not involving Northern Kentucky schools, but one of great importance, especially to the folks in Fort Thomas, it is Bell County 7 and Belfry 7. Here's the kick. This is going to come to the short man, Young, at the 15-yard line. He's to the 20, the 25, straight up the middle, still on his feet, to the 40-yard line and brought down from behind. Boy, he got through the initial surge. And I believe, was that Schachter in there? Noah Schachter, great. In from just inside their 40-yard line. He went up 13 to 12. Skirvin alone back in the backfield on this first down. And the handoff is to Skirvin. Skirvin with about a yard, and that is all to the 41. It'll bring up a second down and nine. In on the tackle, Dwight Morrison, and now the Beachwood vocal crowd becoming more vocal. Up that earlier this season, Dayton was shut out, 18 to nothing. Right now, just one back in the backfield, two receivers to both sides for the white-shirted Green Devils. Here's the handoff to Skirvin up the gut to the 45. He's close to the 50 and brought down right there, and that is going to be enough for the first down. Jeff Dillon in on the stop. I'll tell you what, Jeff Dillon already hit at the spot of the football who has been very, very close. And right now, Skirvin and Klein having a discussion of their own as there's some mix-up in regard to the play call, and they got a quickly right, hurry right up the line up. of scrimmage. Right at midfield on this first down from the 50-yard line. And now they give it to Skirvin. There was a lot of mix-up. Skirvin didn't know where to go. He goes across the 50 to around the 48-yard line, but that took a long time to develop. Nasty and on the stop, Skirvin went right. The play was to the left. He had to stop after he took a step, cut it back to the left-hand side. The Minutes to go in the half. He rolls on. Dale Mueller. He's going to be happy, and he's probably going to be looking for me tonight. And Dale, I'm in for Mitchell. Second down and seven. Back to throw is Clyde. Quick out pattern. And with the football over there is Klosterman. And Klosterman, not much. In fact, just back to the line of scrimmage. And that'll bring up a third down for the Green Devils. Joey Lifton on to the big fella, Neil Richardson. Ratliff and Young, wide out. Hand off Skirvin. Up the middle. He's to the 40 and brought down. And I believe Close. that will be, whoa. Just a shy. Yeah, I think he's going to be shy of first yep. down yardage. I thought he made it to the 40. Guys like Massey up there are going to do just that. Fourth and about a foot. Hand off to Skirvin. Left side gets the first down. But, Randy, I think Dayton that time wasn't set. That may cost oh, him yeah, five yards. Flag down at around the 41-yard line. And I snapped it up. That was a good call. Dayton's got to feel like they are just snake bitten with the goodness. penalty flags tonight. Now they got to punt the football, Kevin, back to the 45-yard line. I, up I think they five. do, too. I think they do, which is probably the last thing Dan Ritter wants to do, but that's the smart decision, and here comes the special team unit for the visitors. So they will have to punt it away after they had made the first down. Well, that was a good call, though. Yep. It snatched it right away from him. Bishop will go back as well as Coyle at around the 15. And don't forget, Dayton started this football game with the football, so Beachwood will have it to begin the second half. So a very important final six Better minutes and 25 seconds of this quarter right now. Beachwood up 13 to 12. They almost blocked it half. I think got to punt it away. Here's the kick. A high kick by Skirvin will come down to Bishop at the 15-yard line. He'll backpedal, kick it to the right side. He's to the 20, to the 25, and brought down at around the 28-yard line. Good open field tackle and a punt of 30 yards. Dayton, it's been Jason Skirvin, 10 carries, 129 yards. First and 10, hand off to Wolfeck. Wolfeck up the gut to about the 34. Nice pickup that time of 
From six yards. Second down and long for Beachwood. Quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Hurry up they offense. can't get their team out off the field. Wolfbeck with a football up the middle. And he's brought down at around the 38-yard line. The Beachwood fans wanted a penalty. Now we got a late flag for too many men on the field. That, that, that is the home crowd talking the back judge into the penalty. And I don't know. That guy had absolutely nothing to do with the play. I think that's a poor, poor call when you're going to call it that late. If you see it right away, then call it. Don't let the crowd influence your call. That's my opinion. That's illegal participation against the Green Devils. And quite frankly, that young man, the referee, the back judge, Kevin McGrath, got talked into that penalty by the homesteading crowd. And, hey, that's why Beachwood wants to have home field advantage. That's why you try to play so well in district play in the regular season so you can get some of those things to happen. And right now, you give that big first down to the home field advantage and the 12th man here at Beachwood High School. If Beachwood wins tonight, if Pike... And Wolfeck has become the workhorse, but this time the wishbone formation in the backfield for Beachwood. Here's the pitch to Wolfeck around the right side, and he's going to be stopped. About a yard loss, and getting in there on the play was Delbert Honecker, the safe side yardage. And so far it's worked. It has worked, and this time they're going to go with a two-deep zone defense, although it's short yardage for Beachwood. Wisher back to throw the football. Lift. Throws over the middle. Joey Lift with the catch, and he has enough for the, for the first down to the 49-yard line. Yeah, it was actually second and ten there. I'm to think one for positive yardage. His last pass that was complete was to Bishop for no gain. Hand off Wolfpack to the 50 across midfield before he is turned back in a major hurry. And a sea of green and white. Well, not before he goes across midfield to the 49-yard line and into Green Devil territory. One thing you got to say about Dayton is they're playing very, very tough, and I would say that the, the one senior... He's asked to be the middle linebacker on defense and the feature back on offense for Dan Ritter's Green Devils. Wolfpack alone back in the backfield. Tanner's to the near to the far side. Kaiser. Kaiser. Will go Wisher going for Kaiser at the 30-yard line. He brings it down at the 26. Double coverage, and Kaiser went up top and got it. Well, that's a great pass and catch from Wisher to Kaiser for some 23 yards and another Beachwood first down. Robertson Snyder in on the coverage, but Ka again this year for Mike Yeagle and the Beachwood Tigers. Doesn't have the receiver he's connected with nope. last year, Dustin Jones, but they had a field day in that final. The ball now at the Dayton 26-yard line. And in motion will go Bishop. Here's the pitch right side. Wolfpack looking for some yardage. He's to the 25 and brought down right there. Gain of about one. And on the stop, Tim Simmons. It's, once again, Dayton doing a good job. Good job because Beachwood has some good blocking backs, but tonight Dayton's linebackers have done a fine job. Second down and nine. Here's the handoff inside. It's Josh Bishop. Josh Bishop with a football to about the 20-yard line. And that's going to bring up a third down and five now for Beachwood. Simmons in on the stop. Right, and again, Joey List, the guy who we were very impressed with earlier in the season, has one catch from his tight end slot. He's lined up to the right side of the offensive line this time for Beachwood. Third and five. Here's the reverse. Left side, Coyle, Coyle. trying to cut the corner, trying to get the running room. He didn't get it. He had to get to the 15. He got to the 18, and that is all in a great tackle by Steve Snyder. Open field for the Dayton Green Devils. I do think the middle of the field is open, Big. and Beachwood might have to attack that. Big fourth and three. Hand off Wolfbeck up the middle. That's enough for the first down. Had to get to the 15, and he got just across the 15. So on fourth down and three, they convert. Jeremiah Brill on the stop. And let's go back to Beachwood on the march to under two minutes. At the 14. Here's the handoff to the 10. Lubrecht. Lubrecht. Lubrecht is gone. <laughs> it's, it's Wolfbeck. Lubrecht would have done that last year. Double Hanukkah in on the tackle. He's got to bring up a second down and two. Beachwood has two timeouts left in the second quarter. Here's the handoff straight up the middle. Bishop. Bishop. Josh. Josh Bishop with the football. This time inside the three to about the two, and that'll be enough for a first down. It'll be first down and goal to go for the Beachwood Tigers with a minute 16 left to go here in the first half. And I cannot pass. Beachwood, if they punch it in here, they can go up by at least seven points. Here's the handoff. Bishop up the middle, right side, touchdown. Josh Bishop, off right tackle, diving into the end zone from three yards out, and Beachwood has gone on top 20 to 12. That was a nice offensive drive by the Beachwood Tigers. 19 to 12, I should say. And now, extra, big extra point here. Lines are down. Snap on the tee, kick is up, and it is good. 20 to 12, eight point lead for the Beachwood Tigers, but at 13, left to go in the first half, and we'll be back on the spot. get a word with Dan before Dayton goes into the halftime locker room. All at the 25-yard line. 
Quiet underneath. Here's the pitch outside. Skirvin looking for some running room and nowhere to go. It's he is slowed under in a sea of red and white at the 25. That's our boy Zellin again, isn't it? Yep. Zellin in there to make the charge in the first half of play. Beachwood leads 20 to 12. 30 seconds left in half number one. Second down. Hand off Skirvin. Up the middle. Skirvin for about three yards, maybe four. And Tom Massey in on the stop. And that'll bring up a third down. Let's go back to Sports Central for another scoring update. Thank you, Randy. It's halftime. Down. Here's on top of eight, 20 to 12. Let's go down to Mike Woods on the sideline with Dan. Is in our community. Well, I mentioned this up to the coach Ritter uh, before the game. Uh, you stand out here on the sidelines and you see you Beachwood's definitely the bigger team. And with Dayton, as, I, as I've said before, I do more Central Catholic when I coach against them. They play with more heart than they do uh, physical our, ability. Our, our kids stand up and uh, take the challenge. Oh, here's the kickoff return by the Beachwood Tiger. It's Schachter. He's trying to get outside, and he's going to be brought down around the 33-yard line. That was Sam Seidel, the athletic director of Dayton. Thanks a lot, Sam. We appreciate your time. And now back to the play. I would think, Kevin, a real important series right here for the Dayton Green Devil defense. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. And off the Wolfex, straight up the gut. Powers forward to about the 39. And we've got another scoring update back to Jeff Elder. Uh, 7, Bart's down 7 at the half, and this is somewhat a surprise. With six minutes left in the first half, Lynn Camp 12, Pikeville Zippo. Wow, here's wow. the pitch to the outside, and that's the one the folks here at Beachwood were waiting for. The pitch to Wolfeck, he's to the 42-yard line. Delbert Honecker, they're right, because they could win camp would win. They would be back here. They're right here at Edgar McNabb Field. That's right. Next week, here's the handoff to Bishop no, off the side, and he is brought down. they got to take care of business here first. They so, sure do. On third down, they do not make it, and they're going to have to out of the way. That was a great defensive. If it's Beachwood playing at home next week. Boy, oh boy, and the Dayton Green Devil defense comes out and does just what you said they needed to do, Randy. Come up with a big stop. They do, and Wolfpack has to punt it away. High kick. It will bounce at the 15-yard line and take a Dayton roll this time. Is it? All right. Actually, will bounce at the 25 and roll forward to about the 29. A punt of just 30 yards. And the 9 is 3. They came in the number 3 seed and knocked off the number 1 Harlan seed. And now trying to do it to Pikeville as well. Here's the handoff up the middle with the football. Is, I believe, that was Klosterman with it to around the 30-yard line. A gain of a couple. Joey Liston on the stop, and it'll bring up a second down and eight. Us are the safety men for the Tigers. 20 to 12 is your score. Dayton with the football. Ball at the 30-yard line. Facts are split in the backfield. On his second down and eight with the ball at the 30. Klein will give it off. Skirvin straight up the middle, and Skirvin will fall forward to about the 34. And that'll bring up a third down. Jeff Zellin in on the stop. And they're down at about four. Randy. And they would either play Madison Southern or Boyle County at home. Third down and five for the Dayton Green Devils. Klein underneath. Here's the handoff. Skirvin to the right side. Will not make the first down. It's dropped at the 35-yard line. Jeff Zellin again in on the stop. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Talk to Jeff Eldred and Ray Hopkins for wrapping up all that information for you and packaging it very nicely. And producing those results over the airways for you right here on the Star Sports Network. Coyle and Bishop back. Here's the punt by Skirvin. A low line drive will bounce at the 40. Picked up by Coyle up to 35. He's to the 40-yard line and run out of bounds. Right at around the 40-yard line. And a punt of 32 yards, return of about six. And they will mark it at the 41. Defense again called on by Dan Ritter and the visiting fans to come up big. Wishbone formation for the Tigers. Double tight. Hand off straight Bishop. up the middle. Josh Bishop with a football to midfield and across midfield around the 49-yard line. So most go first down. It's making the necessary adjustments and on a crisp. November 22nd evening. Beachwood looking to advance to the final four in the single-A level. Second down to one. Here's the ball, ball. ball in the backfield. It's picked up by Joey Lift. Lift still with the football. Cuts it across and gets some yardage back to about the 43-yard line. 44. They lost seven on it, but that's six, let's call it, for Beachwood. And again, I'm impressed with the Dayton's defense and their discipline tonight. They're staying in their lane. Third and six, man off the Wolfpack straight up the middle. He did not make the first down to the 49-yard line. Had to get to the 49 of Dayton. He's going to be two yards short. It'll bring up a fourth down and two for the Tigers. And decision time for Mike Eagle. I think he'll go for it, quite frankly. For the win against Mayfield, why wouldn't he go for it on fourth and two? He has confidence in his offense. Wisher underneath, quarterback keeper. He didn't get he it. He didn't get it. No, nope. he didn't. The midfield, and that is all. And Dayton will take over on downs. Jeremiah Brill on the stop. 
In there also is Mike Walls, and I believe Dayton's going to get the ball back at midfield. Yep, they're going to measure, I'm sure, but I think he's just shy of the first down marker. Nope, they're not even going to measure, Kevin. At the 50-yard line. Position. Let's see what they can do with it. Great. 50 yards from Pater. As I said early in the broadcast, though, somebody else has to come up big besides Jason Turvin in the Dayton offense if the Green Devils want to advance. Foster in motion. Klein will go back to throw the football. Richardson. But makes, he's going to throw long. Trying to go to Richardson at the 20 yard line. Goes up. It is complete and Coyle with a great defensive play. Does he bat it away? Foss was back there, but Coyle was the one that made the part. Has provided 136 yards offense. The rest of the ground game for Dayton has mustered nine yards. Second down and 10 with the ball at the 50 yard line. Here's the pitch. Here's the reverse. Left side with a football. Nope. And Sherman still in. got the football. He's in the end zone. Sherman will go for a touchdown. He fakes the reverse and goes into the end zone. They fake the double reverse. Sherman kept the football. And what a fake. Everybody, absolutely everybody, thought Chris Klosterman had the football. And nobody even watched Jason Sherman. The big, big two point conversion, though, now for the tie for the Green Devils. The Green Devils going for the tie. Line underneath on the two point conversion. He'll roll to the right. Look downfield. Looking. Throws in the end zone. Two point conversion is good. Jason or Trey Scott with a catch in the back of the end zone. And boy two touchdowns. And Dayton now taking off to the home standing Beachwood Tigers. All right, that's 20. And the defense has come up big in this quarter for Dayton. A low squib will come to one of the up men. With the football at the 30-yard line, still on his feet, driving forward to about the 39. And we have to figure out who that is. It is none other than Mr. Josh Morris. Yep, carried the foot. A couple guys tried to tackle him. Got to like that call from Dan Ritter. First down, Beachwood. Here's the handoff straight up the middle to Josh Bishop. Bishop to around the 44-yard line. So the momentum change changes into a much greater momentum change after they stop her date. And they have pulled out all the stops tonight, and that's what you have to do against Beachwood. And again, right now, Beachwood's made the adjustment. They're running inside the tackles and running well, but I don't think that's Beachwood's game. Second down and six. Here's the handoff to Coyle around the outside. He gets to the 45-yard line. Nice job by Coyle to get to the 45 because he was flat out back at the 40. Jeremiah Brillo on the stop, but that they forced Beachwood to beat him inside the tackles, and Beachwood is capable of doing that, don't get me wrong, but Dayton is forcing and Third down, play. and off Wolfpack, first down yardage across midfield, big first down to the 48-yard line of Dayton. Randy, I, I think again, Beachwood in the third quarter, this one is not at a 20. Double tight, hand off, left side with a football is Wolfeck. Wolfeck, and he gets to about the 43-yard line. Tripped up there on a good open field tackle by Joe Ackerson. They're Len smelling Camp it. Out. They're smelling it in Lynn Camp. Wherever that is. Second down and six. Here's the handoff. Bishop up the middle. Bryant Bishop, the first down yardage at about the 36. Chris Klosterman in on the tackle. We got a good one for you here. Yep, this year. The folks from Pikeville might not even make it up. First down from the 37. Beachwood on the drive. Handoff straight up the middle. Wolfbeck with a football across the 35 and about the 33-yard line. And again, Beachwood just playing smash mouth football right now. But I think, again, Dayton's and Beachwood to take up some time. They're not just letting Beachwood run a couple plays and score. Again, the wishbone formation in the backfield for the Tigers. And here's the pitch. Brian Bishop around the left side looking for some running room. And he will not find much. In fact, back to the line of scrimmage. And that is all. And Chris Kloosterman, the linebacker, in there to make the stop. And Kevin, you've They're taking away to play the smash mouth football. you got to give Beachwood credit. They keep trying the outside stuff, but it's just not there tonight. Great defense by Dayton. Third and seven handoff. Josh Bishop straight up the middle. And he loses the football at the 25-yard line. And the Green Devils got it. come up with it. They at sure the 25-yard line, Bishop got hit as he was going down and caught up the football and randy coming up with the football that time football back actually on defense dayton has the football back check that at their own 26 yard line ball at the 26 skirvin underneath first down for the 26 skirvin with the football and he's not going to go anywhere in fact kind of lost the yard is fine handing off to skirvin and he lost the yard back to the 25 and holderman in there on the stop call the music house 341-1999 they finished three periods in Fort Thomas. Highlands 33, Connor nothing. Clyde with the pitch to Young, who's replaced Skirvin to the outside and nowhere for Mr. Young to go. As he is flushed back at the 24-yard line, Holderman in on the stop. And the big gun in the offense for the Nate Green Devils on the sidelines right now. Fort, third down and 12. And really, this is a tough time. And if I'm Beachwood, I'm really teeing off this time on the quarterback, Klein, who again has done a good job of not turning the ball over tonight for the Green Devils. 
Third and 12, flying underneath. He'll go back to throw the football on this third down play. Look, look, flushed out, drop back at the 15-yard line. And big Dan Woolley in there. Together, Klein in his arms and throwing to the turf at the 15. And Dayton will have to put it away. That is the first sack of the night for the Beachwood Tigers. Dayton Green right. So that makes this a very important special teams play as well. A minute 40 left to go in the third quarter. And in there right now, I Charlie believe Young. that is... Yep. Charlie Young. Or is that William Perry? That's William Perry. Oh, you're right. And Perry does put it nice away. And a pretty good kick. As they drive him back to the 50-yard line, Brian Bishop now to the 50, cuts to the left side. Still on his feet at the 45, and finally run out of bounds at around the 45-yard line. A 34-yard punt. Not a bad punt. No, not at all. Uh, William, first touchdown of the night. This game is tied at 20. A minute 21 left to go in the third quarter. And off. Up Wolfpack. the middle, Wolfpack to the 40, to the 35. That is close to first down yardage. In fact, I think he might have got it, but a penalty flag is down at the 45-yard line in the backfield of the Beachwood Tigers. Go against the Tigers. And the Tigers haven't had middle penalties called against them tonight. This one illegal procedure. procedure. And Randy, they do that have really, in my opinion, and Mike, I want to get your thoughts on this too. I think they've done that a lot. They've gone from the quick huddle tonight, but boy, oh boy, it's very, very questionable whether or not they're set before with a couple other teams, but there's no count after that. When they go down, they're off. Here's the handoff. Ryan Bishop up the middle to about the 45-yard line, back to the original line of scrimmage, and that's going to bring up a second down at 10. And here comes this moving left to right on your radio dial. Had an eight-point lead at halftime. That is evaporated here in the third quarter. Second and nine, here's the handoff. Back. Wolf back, and he's not going very far at all. Durbin in there. And Maybe. also in there on the tackle was Steve Schneider, who's played a good defensive game tonight for the group. They're obviously convinced they can take care of things up at the line of scrimmage against the Dayton defense. Ratliff wide out to the far side on this third down and eight. Bishop will go in motion. Wisher will roll to the right. Look downfield. Step up into the pocket. Now he's going to be dropped at around the 43-yard line. And in there on the stop was Young. And Wisher pulled that down, I think. Doing this thing in the route, and I think trying to take away the outside game yep. of Beachwood. I mean, the, oh, the middle is open. Joey List has got to come up big, and I think Beachwood might have to throw the football more in order to win this game. Honaker and Young standing back at the 10-yard line, and Wolfeck set the punt away back at his own 45. Wolfeck needs to angle this one out of bounds. Here's the snap. He will go for the angle on the left side. It will come down. The Honaker. ball is Honaker. He's to the 10, to the 15. Still on his feet and brought down at around the 19-yard line. So they get it out really from the shadow of the end zone. Good job by Honaker to the 19. And that is word from the post call. That one, it was 18 and nothing. Beachwood with the win there. But here it is tied at 24th quarter action. Dayton moving left to right on WCBG. First down with the ball at the 19-yard line. Klein will give it off on the quick hitter up the middle. And William Perry for about two yards will bring up a second down and eight. And again, we want to update folks uh, listening in. On another score in terms of Dump Star Sports Radio Network, but Boone County certainly can come back in that game. Oh, we also have Lynn Camp on top of Pike, 20 to nothing, and Madison Southern on top of Royal County, 14 to 7. Second down and eight, Klein with the quick hit of the outside. That's incomplete. Yep. And quickly, though, the wide receiver did the smart thing of covering up just in case it was a lateral football. Is the well, I think it was up. a lateral, actually, in the second half of play. They haven't allowed Beach with the score, but Dayton's got to get something going offensively. Klein underneath. High formation on this third down and 12. And here's the pitch to Skirvin. Skirvin to the 20-yard line, and that's not near enough for the first down to about the 21, and they're going to have to punt it away. Bishop in on the stop. It's field position, a game of field position right now, certainly to a 20. And ready to punt it away. Is that Perry again back there? That's Skirvin. Oh, it's Skirvin this time. Here's the kick, and the high kick. We're about to take a Beachwood roll. And we'll roll down at around the 44-yard line. A punt of just 25 yards. They are going to open up. Ratliff to the far side. Bishop to the near. And here's the pitch to the outside. With it is Wolfpack. He's to the 35-yard line and brought down at around the 31. That'll be enough for the first down as they'll move the stick. A gain of about 12 to the 31. If each were to win this game, they could possibly be at home next week. Yeah. If Dayton wins it, they would be at home too. Right. Here's the handoff up the middle of Wolfpack. Wolfpack to the outside to about the 27-yard line. Wolfpack's had a big game tonight. 23 carries, 106 at stake in this one. A berth in a single-A final four. 20, 20 is your score, under nine minutes to go. Second and seven. Here's the handoff straight up the middle Bishop. of the Bishop. He's to the 20-yard line. Ryan, or Josh Bishop with a football to the 20. And that will be close to first down yardage. Josh Bishop. Now they'll bring out the double tights again and pull it up close. First down and 10 from the 20. Here's the handoff to Wolfpack straight up the middle. Dives over the pile to about the 17. And that'll bring up a second down and seven 
with 8.26 to play. The number tonight, second down and seven. Once again, the full house backfield. Here's the handoff up the middle. Josh Bishop again to about the 15-yard line, and that'll bring up the third and five. Big play right here in this football game. A fourth in the final four. Beachwood will come out of the eye formation. Third and five. And here's the pitch to the outside. Wolfpack loses the football, and it will go out of bounds. He, Wolfpack he had a smart thing, Randy. He knocked the ball out of bounds, and that allowed Beachwood to retain possession, even though it will be fourth down. It'll be pretty. Picker has got to try to kick it really the opposite way in which he would like to. This is going to be a 24-yard attempt, or a 34-yard attempt. Here's a kick from 34 yards out by Wolfpack. Long enough, and it is good! Wolfpack from 34 yards with the field goal to put Beachwood up 23-20 with 6.57 left to go. Wolfpack has a touchdown on the night and a field goal. That was a beautiful kick, Randy, because for a left-footed kicker, really kicking it from the opposite hash mark that you would like to have put it up from, but a great job by Wolfpack. Low squib kick will come to one of the up men out of his hands and into the hands of Skirvin at the 15. He's to the 20, to the 25. Cuts it to the outside. He's to the 40. Wolfpack. He's to the 50. And Wolfpack brings him down across midfield and around the 48-yard line. Wolfpack was the last guy that had a chance down the left side, and he was the guy that... They come up with the full house backfield at a power eye. First down from the 47. And here's the handoff to Skirvin. He bangs forward to the 44-yard line, and Jeff Zellin again in on the stop. That's, I mean, Mike Wood, you're down on the field. I mean, is Jeff Zellin, are there three or four guys wearing number 62 tonight, or what's the deal? Earlier in the year, and he played the same way then. He's a consistent, tenacious defensive linebacker. Once again, Dayton in the power eye, and the second down and seven. Here's the handoff left side. Skirvin looking for some running room, cuts it to the outside. Coyle in on the stop, but Skirvin to around the 38-yard line. Joey List in on the stop. Boyle in there as well, close to first down here. Dayton has the football at the far hash mark. At the far, far hash mark, Skirvin starts off very deep in the offensive backfield for the Green Devils. It's a long one on third down. Here's the hand off to Skirvin up the middle. Yes, first down yardage to about the 35. They will move to six. I don't know, Randy. They're not going to give him a very favorable Boy, they mark. They're not going to give him a favorable mark. I still do think he got the first down, but it's not a very good mark. King was the head coach then. Dan Ritter has been the boss for the last 13 years. This Ball could be the furthest as Green Devils go. Pitch to Skirvin around the outside and a great open field tackle at the 39-yard line. And Josh Bishop, the linebacker, shooting through to make a big stop. That's just playing linebacker the way it's drawn up by your coaches. Shooting me 3-20. to 20. And again, Dayton can't fool around on the second down play. I think they got to keep going to Skirvin. Second down at 13. Flying underneath, barking out the signals. Here's the handoff. Skirvin. Skirvin up the middle to about the 36-yard line. And that is just back to the original line of scrimmage. We'll bring out a third and 10 and Jeff Zellin in on the stop. So third and 10. What is the lay of game penalty here? Third down and 10 with 3.32 to play. Flying underneath with a ball at the 37-yard line. He will go back, fake, look downfield, look, look, throw for Honecker, and he is mugged. Oh. And the flag is down as Fox picks it off, but Honecker was mugged at the 25-yard line, and this is going to go against the Beachwood Tigers. Brian Bishop was all over the back of Honecker at the 25, although Fox Boy, Brian Honecker Bishop was, was beat that time. Yep, yep, Bishop was beat that time, and he just drug Honecker to the turf, and two flags are down at the same spot. Now they're conferring, will it be offensive pass interference that Honecker draw the foul against himself? 3.19 to go. It's Beachwood leading Dayton by three points, 23 to 20. We will sort this out. And it's going to be passed. That's a good push. call. Yep. Against the Beachwood Tigers. Absolutely a good call. Yep. Honecker was flat out mugged at the 25-yard line. And they will give them an automatic 21-yard line with 3.19 to go. Do you take it? Dan says, yes, sir, every time and how. Ball. And I think some concern, homestanding Beachwood Tiger fans yep. right now. Ball at the 21-yard line. Underneath his line. Handoff Skirvin up the middle. He's to the 15 and brought down inside the 15 at about the 13-yard line. Brad Boston on the tackle. What a big gain for the Dayton Green Devil. Let's go back. Have it. And they're not out yet. No, they're not. Second and two. They're the winning. 14-yard line. Line underneath from the 14 on the second and two. The handoff straight up the middle with the football is Perry. And I'm not sure he made the first down. He did. He got to about the 12. Dan Woolley in on the stop. But he is shy of the 13, third down and one. But a long one, maybe even two. From the 13-yard line, flying underneath again, hand off to Skirvin, first down to the 10. 
Right across the 10 and down inside the 10 to about the 9, and it will be first down and goal to go. Josh Bishop in on the stop for the Elder Muller game. Oh, yeah. Nothing's over till it's over, and Beachwood remains the king as of right now. First and goal to go. The power eye for the Green Devils. Hand off the skirt and around the right side. He is brought down, and a good tackle. Foss in there on the stop as well as Jeff Dillon. And that'll bring up the second VP, but all that must wait. Second down and goal from the 10-yard line for Dayton. A minute 35 left. Line underneath. In the eye formation on this second down and goal to go for the 10 to hand off to Skirvin. Skirvin looking for some running room. He's to the five-yard line and brought down right there. And this will bring up a third down and goal to go from just outside the five. And how about the excitement now on the sidelines, Mike? I'll tell you right now, their spring tackler, he was into the end zone. We're under a minute to go. Beachwood trying to cling and hang on to their three-point lead. Line underneath. Power eye formation on the third and five. Here's the handoff to Skirvin off the left side. Brought down at the five. Five-yard line, and this will bring up a fourth down. It's right in the middle of the field, Kevin. And will they go for the field goal to tie it? Massey in on the stop. They're going to call a timeout and talk about it first. I mean, if he's going for this, I've never seen a gutsy call of this. And you're right. They're, they're going, going for, for it. it. I can't believe it. And I don't agree with it. I'm going to say it before the play. Fourth down and goal to go from the five. And Dayton will go for it. Here's the roll from Klein. Looking into the end zone. Looking, looking, throwing. And it's going to be incomplete. Incomplete in the end zone. And the Beachwood Tigers are going to survive. Out of the skin of their teeth. Well, Randy, I just can't agree with that. I mean, look, I'm going to give all the credit in the world to Dan Ritter and the coaching job he and his staff came up with tonight. They did a great job, had a great game plan. Jerry Klein, that was the seventh pass of the night. He's completed three of them, but I just don't see how you don't go for the tie to tie this thing up at 23 apiece. There's only 30 seconds left. You just have lost the football game. Yeah, I, I think so, too. I think you're right, Kevin, especially where the football is. It's yeah. right in the middle of the field. Yeah, I, I just two yards back from an extra point. Now, now again, you've got this difference-making field goal try tonight. And? And we have Skirvin out of the end zone on the kick return. Yep, and we might have to go with both of them because you're right. Wolfpack did also do that. So uh, 30 seconds left. We'll keep you posted on that and also be talking with Mike Gagel if the Tigers hang on. 30 seconds left at Beachwood 23, Dayton 20. This is the Star Sports Network, and this has been a great football game tonight. And movement on the left side well, of the Dayton defense. And that time it was, again, Tim Simmons who had a costly penalty in the first quarter for the Green Devils. But, again, I have nothing but praise and, and, and really uh, – just outstanding execution tonight for the Dayton Green Devils, Randy. I mean, you got to take your hat off to this football team. I mean, their crowd got behind them. Their folks were excited. But when it came down to crunch time, a big fourth down and five decision with just some 30-odd seconds left, Dayton elected to try to get the game-winning touchdown. And Wisher will just fall on top of the football at the 10-yard line. And the Beachwood Tigers have survived a major, major scare. More than that. More than that even, Randy. Yeah, I mean, here comes the penalty fight. flag down. I mean, Dayton's just frustrated now. 17 seconds left. But, you know, Dan Ritter down on the sideline. Mike, you might want to try to get a word with Dan, too, just to ask him why he, he elected that call. I think that might be something to do uh, when the clubs shake hands and whatnot. And, again, we'll be talking, of course, with the victorious coach, Mike Yeagle, the Beachwood Tigers, his club who will have off 10 straight wins and probably be talking with, I think, our co-MVPs tonight, yeah. Randy. Co-MVPs. I don't think – I mean, they both play such a huge part in this one. I don't think you can separate it. Yep, Dillon and also Wolfbeck. And right now, leaving the football game is – a hot-headed young man, Mr. Tim Simmons for the Dayton Green Devils. He's, he's frustrated with the fact that his club lost, but you've got to there, – there's no problem with playing with emotions, but even having those emotions, you've got to keep it in control. That's all, that's all you can say. Yep. Stay away. Come on. And now you got a player now, wanting to get into it. Now and that's Wooly. And that's, a, that's Wooly. Go, go ahead, go ahead uh, Mike, on the sideline. Uh, one of the Dayton fans from the end of the end zone threw something and hit tomorrow in a more somber state. And they'll reflect back on their – immature actions and idiocy yeah 23 to 20 down to just 12 seconds left in this when the beachwood tigers will not only advance they may be at home next week Lynn camp right now knocking off pikeville in the third quarter it's still a lot of time Two left seconds left 20 to 8 but there's no time left in this one and the beachwood tigers have won it in a wild one 23 to 20 the final score and they will once again go to the state 
semifinals. A close encounter. The Dayton Green Devils had it to the five-yard line, and on fourth down, they could not put it in the end zone, and the Tigers have survived to go once again to the state semifinal. 23-20 the final, and we will take a break and come back right here on the Star Sports Radio Network.